In a fascinating study I just read in JAMA Neurology, it was found that even in relapsing multiple sclerosis, the overwhelming majority of disability worsening is actually not due to relapses. And I'm going to get into this study a little bit. It's actually based on the OPERA 1 and OPERA 2 studies, which were randomized studies for the drug Ocrevus. So Ocrevus, Ocrelizumab, is a medication that works on B lymphocytes. I have a separate video on this topic if you want to check it out. And these were randomized trials against Rebif, which is beta interferon 1A, given three times a week. And the study showed that Ocrevus is more effective than Rebif at preventing relapses and preventing new MRI lesions. But this is a post hoc analysis looking at sub something else. And we're going to get into it, but first I just want to say in a prior video I did on multiple sclerosis in general, I promised to give away my book, Resilience in the, uh, the Face of Multiple Sclerosis, and 11 people asked for it, and I completely forgot to do the giveaway. But to make it up for you, I was supposed to do the lottery, but I'm just going to go ahead and give it away to all 11 people and I'll post up the names of the people who are entitled to the book. Now I do have to find a way to send you a private message so you could either post your email in the comments below and of course I understand that you don't want to do that so go ahead and follow me on Twitter and I'll post a link in the comments about how to follow me and then you can I'll send you a private message and you can collect your prize. Again, sorry about that but I do intend to honor that. Now getting back to the study a little bit this study looked at did a very complicated statistical analysis looking at how people worsened and they defined two types of worsening one is relapse associated worsening RAW and the other was the acronym PIRA which is progressive progression independent of relapses and just to give a little bit of background about relapses and progression, there's this thought that there's sort of two ways to get worse with multiple sclerosis. One is to have a relapse, which is sort of a subacute worsening of neurological symptoms due to inflammation in the nervous system. And a good example of a relapse would be something like, on Tuesday I developed pain in my right eye and it progressed over a couple of days and then I had haziness in the center of my vision and the colors were distorted and I was examined examined by a doctor and diagnosed with optic neuritis. That's very typical of a multiple sclerosis relapse, and by the way, I do have a separate video on optic neuritis if you want to check it out. However, some people, and by the way, after a relapse, many people worsen over many days or weeks, sort of plateau, and then often improve either spontaneously or with intravenous or oral steroids. But the point is that not everyone improves 100%. So you may have very bad vision at your nadir, and it may get significantly better, but you may be left with a small defect in the center, a central scotoma, or maybe your vision was previously 20 out of 20, but now it's 20 out of 25. And the idea is if you have relapses over many years, or if you have severe relapses with poor recovery, you could get worse over time. And so that's one way to develop worsening disability with multiple sclerosis, but in this study it was actually the less common way to have increasing disability even in relapsing multiple sclerosis. Now the other way we think of that people get worse is progression. And progression is a slow, insidious increase in disability over time. So to give an example, I could say, you know, five years ago, doctor, I used to be able to walk long distances and hike, and then a few years ago, I could really only walk a couple of miles, and then I would have to rest, and on a, a hot day, maybe I could only walk one mile, and then last year, I could only walk a mile or less, and now even after 800 meters, I have to rest because my legs are dragging. That's a typical history of progressive multiple sclerosis. And it's often so insidious that it's recognized retrospectively after many years. And sometimes the changes are thought to be related to aging or orthopedic injuries when they're really due to progressive multiple sclerosis. Now, a motor decline is just one symptom that could progressively worsen. There are cases where people have worsening clumsiness or worsening cognitive function, which is sometimes more difficult to recognize and, again, is often recognized retrospectively. Now, the key thing about this study that makes it so interesting as these are people with relapsing multiple sclerosis. They were not thought to have progressive disease. So their physicians were seeing them and seeing that they were relatively stable. 
typically we would think, particularly younger people with relapsing MS, if we can prevent relapses and prevent new MRI lesions, they should do relatively well. Whereas people with progressive multiple sclerosis, unfortunately, some of them are progressing even though they have no relapses and no new MRI lesions. So the term progression is a little bit confusing. It's very different than the way we would use it colloquially. But the point is, in this study, the relapse-associated worsening, the RAW, was only accounting for about 17% of the increase in disability over the studies, whereas PIRA, progression independent of relapse activity, PIRA, was actually accounting for the overwhelming majority 83% of the increase in disability. And this kind of challenges our idea that relapsing MS is relapsing and progressive MS is progressing. Now it's long been known that it's sort of a continuum. Younger people are kind of more likely to have relapses and new MRI lesions and are less likely to have progressive MS, although there are rare 20-year-olds that have progressive MS. It's rare, but it does occur. And, you know, 70-year-olds are much more likely to have progressive MS, but there are some 70-year-olds that are stable or have active lesions or relapses. It happens from time to time. And so it's kind of known that there's this continuum and a lot of random variation, and some people are in the middle. They have what's known as tr transitional MS. Maybe they have some progression, but they also make new lesions, and they also have relapses. But this study essentially implies that no, even relapsing multiple sclerosis may be progressive. It may be that it's just very difficult to recognize the progression, and that yet it is very important. And a lot of the changes we're seeing are not due to relapses, but are due to progression. And so we have to be concerned not just with prevention of relapses, but also preventing this sort of almost subclinical progression. And when I say subclinical, it's not really subclinical because obviously it's picked up by the examining doctors. Now, it teaches us a little bit about MS. One is that, in a sense, people with relapsing MS are very resilient because even though relapses are dramatic and we're very afraid of them, you know, most people have a pretty good recovery from most relapses. And you could argue it's not really the main thing you should be concerned about because most disability accumulation is not even due to relapses. But it also kind of shows us how fragile we are, that even if we're not having relapses or new lesions, we still have to be some concern that you know, we could be getting worse. I'm not exactly sure how this changes our, you know, what we think about MS or our treatment. And I'd be interested to know in the comments, do you think that retrospectively, even with relapsing multiple sclerosis, you may have worsened a little bit in subtle ways? If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please post in the comments below.